Let's do that again. Oh, reading it's fun and math is great, but now it's time for art with history. Buenos dias, artistas. Hello, artists. Today, Emmy Lou, the art dog, and I are going to read you a very hungry caterpillar in Spanish and English because my book came in the mail. I'm very excited. Then we're going to learn how to make papers like Eric Carl does. We'll let them dry, and on Monday, we'll create a collage, okay? Because I don't like my lessons to get too long. So here's our book. And this is a very, I think it's a very fun way to work. I like how he does his papers, and I think you'll enjoy it too. The Very Hungry Caterpillar, La Oruga Muy Hambrienta, by Eric Carl. For my sister Christina, a mi hermana, Krista. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. Al claro de luna reposa un huevecillo sobre una hoja. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. Un domingo de mañana apenas salió el tibio sol. Del huevo salió una orgulla diminutiva y muy hambrienta. He started to look for some food. Enseguida empezó a buscar comida. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. El lunes comió, comió y atravesó una manzana, pero aún seguía hambrienta. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. El martes comió, comió y tra atravesó dos perras, pero aún seguía hambrienta. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. El miércoles comió, comió y atravesó tres ciruelas, pero aún seguía hambrienta. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. El jueves comió, comió y atravesó cuatro fresas, pero aún seguía hambrienta. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. El viernes comió, comió y atravesó cinco naranjas, pero aún seguía hambrienta. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, and one slice of salami. El sábado comió, comió y atravesó un bizcocho de chocolate, un helado, un pepinillo, un trozo de queso suizo, Una rodaja de salame, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. Una paleta, un pastel de cerezas, una salchicha, un pastelito, y una tajada de sandía. That night he had a stomachache. Ese noche tuvo un tremendo dolor de estómago. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after that, he felt much better. Al día siguiente, era domingo otra vez. La oruga comió una hermosa hoja bien verde y se sintió mucho mejor. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big fat caterpillar. Ya no tenía hambre, ni era una pequeña oruga. Ahora era una oruga grande y gorda. He built a small house a, called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks, and then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and construyó una casita a su, a su alrededor, un capullo, y se encerró en ella por más de dos semanas. Un día hizo un agujero en el capullo, empujó un poco para salir, y... Se encontró convertida a una bellísima mariposa. And he was a beautiful butterfly. So let's learn how to make these wonderful papers that Eric Carl makes. And then we'll let them dry. And then on Monday, we'll turn them into a collage. I started out here because when we're doing art at home, we have to be super creative because we don't always have everything we might normally have in the art room. So let me show you how I made my leaf. I took 
this piece of grocery bag and I cut a leaf shape and then I took some crepa and I made the leaf veins and then I cut another lighter green and made the stem, okay? To make the face, I took some part of this red coffee bag and I wanted these yellow eyes so I took part of this yellow coffee bag for here and then I took some bright green from this taco box to make those pupils. And I thought the antennae would be really nice if I used these twisties, okay? I have, I saved these and I don't know why. We'll probably do a twisty art project at some point. Then I made these papers for the body. And that's what I'm going to show you how to make. And next week we'll work on gluing them down and making it into a collage and you can make a caterpillar, maybe you want to make a butterfly, maybe you want to make the food. This book makes me hungry. You don't have to make a caterpillar. So this is not finished but I wanted to show you how I started so that you can start thinking about your collage for Monday. Okay? And my papers, I wanted them to be bluer and greener than they turned out naturally. So I went over them with some paint stick once they were dry. You could also go over them with crepe once they're dry if you decide you want to change your colors. Now, these papers are very, very, very fun to make. This is a little bit messy, so you're going to want to make sure your grown-ups are there to help you. Let me just show you some of the papers I made today. Here's one, there's one, and I'll show you some different techniques. You can try any of them. You can also invent your own. When I do this unit at school, I use grout combs. I don't have any in my house right now, but if you had a plastic fork, you could comb through the paint if mom and dad don't mind. You'd have to get permission, but that would give you the same effect. This one I did with watercolor. We don't all have tempera in our house. You can also make fantastic papers with watercolor. And when we do the collage step, you don't need to use the papers you made. You can use pre-existing paper like I showed you how I made the face and the leaf. I always show you several ways to do everything because I don't know what supplies you have at home and what you don't have at home, okay? So here you go. I'll show you some techniques on one paper and you can change things, add to things, do whatever you want. So one technique is dripping, all right? You can just take your brush, you can just drip your paint on, this will work with watercolor or tempera. All right, that's one technique. Another thing that you can do is take your brush, brush on paints, just do this, and then you can take and comb through that paint and get different textures that way. That gives you a very cool look. Again, you would want to make sure it's okay with your grown-ups. Don't want to use a fork that mom and dad value are planning on eating out eating with, of course. And I'm going to add some red. Then I'm going to print off of this paper. It's another technique you can do. All right. So here, I'm going to take my fork again, because I really like that look. There. And it's kind of like a grout comb. And now watch this. Then you can take another paper, put it on top of your painting, very carefully rub it. This is called a monoprint. Mono means one from the language of Greek. And it's because you can't repeat this exact print because you've used up 
the paint. Isn't that cool? And another thing you can do is take your print, do this, and then let's say after you get this print, you think, you know what, that would look better if I only had some yellow. Go ahead, add your yellow. This is a very loose, fun, free way to work. It's just that it's messy enough that you really want to make sure your grown-ups are on board with it. Okay? Now let me show you another thing you can do. I could print this again with another paper, or you can fold it. And that'll change how it looks, too. And remember, when these dry, you can go back into them with crepa or paint stick or paint. We'll talk about that next week because I don't want this lesson to get too long. But look, then you could change it one more time. You can go in with that comb or what if you don't have a plastic fork? You can use the handles of your brush. Look at this. I have a movie of Eric Carle in his studio, and he uses the handle of his brush a whole lot and draws back into his paint. So, there you go. Pretty cool stuff, huh? I hope you have fun. I miss you all. And enjoy the first half of this project, and when our papers are dry, we'll finish it next week. Happy weekend. Bye-bye.